Shaggers, legends, how the hell are we, mate? Everton versus Fulham in the Carabao Cup quarterfinal. It doesn't get much bigger than this, mate. This is bigger than a World Cup final, bigger than a Champions League final, bigger than anything that's ever happened before in human history. Fulham are in touching distance of reaching a cup semi-final and potentially hey i'm not saying anything mate i'm not saying anything controversial potentially a domestic cup final i am so sorry that i didn't upload a reaction to fulham's devastating 3-0 loss to newcastle yesterday i had my work christmas party on friday and yeah 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 i wasn't in a fit state whatsoever to be honest with you pal um never mind it was always gonna happen if there was a free bar and that's what's going to happen when Newcastle need to bounce back with a win off the back of going out in the Champions League, mate, but it's done. It's over. I'm over it. It's not actually that deep, right? This is major. Are you feeling a bit excited? Because I am, mate. Can we all remember the last time we reached the FA Cup quarterfinal last year. That was magical. It was special in my eyes. Yes, it descended into chaos. And it was inevitably, well, not inevitably, it was actually a day to forget. I'm not talking about the rest of that. Obviously, everything that happened. But for that split couple of minutes, everything was just so magical when we were 1-0 up at Old Trafford. We were one game away from Wembley. And I know the Carabao Cup semi-finals aren't played at Wembley, but this is an opportunity for Fulham to reach their first domestic semi-final since 2002 when we went out to Chelsea in the FA Cup, mate. We could be on our way to our first ever League Cup semi-final in this club's history. Are we right to dream? Yes. Can we go all the way and make something happen and make the semis and win the whole thing? Why not? Why not, mate? Why, why don't we just, like, go full throttle and win the whole thing? It's so exciting. You you have the potential of going into a cup semi-final. I know people will say that the Carabao Cup is Mickey Mouse, but it's it's this competition is built for teams like Fulham. Do you know what I mean? To be able to get to the latter stages of this competition and hopefully win some silverware because Fulham, unless they have an absolute freak of a season like Leicester did in, what, 15, 16, uh, that's once-in-a-lifetime sort of stuff. Whereas, like, the Carabao Cup, uh, it's, it's a competition. And the FA Cup, I've always believed that it's a competition that Fulham and clubs of the ilk should be taking very seriously. So, for me, personally, mate, I would take finishing 16th for fitment. Yeah, we're probably, I'm probably going to finish 15th, 16th. Anyway, if it meant getting to a semi-final and getting to Wembley and probably probably losing, mate. Well, it's just it's just fun. These are the sort of narratives that football fans are all over. These are the sort of narratives that football fans dream of. Do you know what I mean? This isn't a playoff final. This is an actual trophy. Right, going into the game then, Everton, um, they're going to bring so much to the table. That is exactly... What I will tell you, since their nine-point deduction last month, they have been on fire. Credit to them. Credit to Sean Dyche for what he's doing. Four wins from their last four league matches. We're in the relegation zone when the points deduction came into play. And now seven points clear of the drop. Four clean sheets on the trot. It's not going to be easy on Tuesday night. Fulham fans can forget about if this is going to be a walk in the park. All you have to do is watch Everton over the last couple of weeks. Sean Dyche, everything that's gone on off the pitch, he has gotten a tune out of his squad and they're ready to go. Normally, when these sorts of situations happen, if you get a major points deduction, it just ruins the whole morale at the club. Everyone doesn't know what they're doing. People are all over the place and it affects the players. It affects everyone. Everyone from the groundsman. Everyone all over a club, but credit and testament to what Sean Dyche has been able to do on the pitch. There is so much that plays into everything. It would be insane. It would be insane if Everton, well, they had this points deduction, have this points deduction, and they go on to a semi-final of a competition and potentially winning the final. What an absolute storyline 
that would be. They're just so dangerous at the moment, mate. I, every time I watch them, it's how they get that ball into the box and exploit those wide areas. I feel like I'm spitting absolutely everywhere today. Um, This is something that Fulham's back line needs to be so wary of on Tuesday night. All you have to do is watch back that Burnley game, comfortable 2-0 victory, pumping the ball into the box constantly. Even before the first goal, you had Calvert-Lewin, who should have scored the header. McNeil as well, the header just before that. They're not even overloading the box, yet people like Jack Harrison can find them inside there. Daesh is just playing with some good high-intensity ball at the moment, mate, and that is something that Fulham need to level if not do more than Everton are going to try and bully Fulham, but Marco Silva cannot let this happen. Very sort of similar style of play, but Fulham now not really pumping the ball into the box as much with Alexander Mitrovic no longer at the club. We're actually playing some sort of sexy, progressive football on the floor. Hence why it's called football and the ball should be left on the floor. Everton fans, you should be so pleased with everything that is going on at the club. you just got to look at people like Ben Godfrey, mate, who got his first start and was so capable in that back line yesterday. Everton are on fire. They're going to be bang up for it, mate, of course, on their own patch as well. Straight into Fulham, Raul Jimenez, mate. Um, a little comment on the Newcastle game and the red card. Uh, it's a red. It's reckless. His bottom literally goes into Longstaff's jaw and his head bounces off the turf. I don't know what he was trying to do, probably trying to block a probably diagonal ball across the pitch or even a ball into the box, but it's mental. It's absolutely mental. I don't know what he was trying to do. I don't know what he was thinking. It was definitely a red. I can see why Marco Silva was frustrated after the match and he's probably annoyed about the Jamal LaSalle's alleged, alleged elbow too. I didn't really think there was like too much in that. I don't think that there was real any malice in there. Some of the the some of the defending against Newcastle was pretty sus to be honest with you mate. Um I don't know how Bruno G managed to get all the way through past three players. It was what Palinha who couldn't get the ball off of him, Pereira who couldn't get the ball off him, Robinson couldn't get the ball off and made an attempt and the ball just sort of like cannoned and rebounded off one another. Then he managed to get through, pass it to Miley and he scored. Yeah, those things happen, mate. It's not that deep, to be honest with you. We know how hard St. James's Park can be to go to. Burnley on Saturday for Fulham, I don't like, I don't really like saying that games are a dead certain, but that should most definitely B3 points, mate. I've been obsessed with this cup run all season with Fulham, and this is the opportunity for us to reach a semi-final, mate. Let that sink in. Away from home, but our record at Goodison Park is solid, mate. Back end of last season, winning. Start of this season, first game of the season as well, winning there. So two wins out of two. I think we can go in there with confidence, mate. There are so many narratives that come into Everton. Unbeaten in four. Fulham, unbeaten at Goodison Park. Premier League matches, 2 5 0 victories, losing at Newcastle. It's so hard to predict any of these games this season because I wouldn't have predicted those 2 5 0 wins for Fulham, what, a couple of weeks ago. I think that Fulham can genuinely, I'm not being deluded, can go all the way and reach the semi final. It's just because the cup is so magical and I believe that we can do this. That sounds so. I tried to make that sound motivating, but it actually didn't. Um, yeah, it actually sounded quite flat, to be honest with you. Is that better? Yeah, we can do this. Just because it's the cup, if I was in Marco Silva's shoes, I would not put out a weakened side. Why would you? Why would you? My only suggestion probably would be, I would like to go unchanged, but maybe bring back... Harrison Reed into the middle. Make it a bit more defensive because it is going to be such a big battle in the middle of the park, mate. Decore and Onana as well. They're going to be they're going to be so hard to deal with. We need Joao Plina on top form like he always is. And Harrison Reed, I think, can be that difference maker there as well. Just the clean up of Joao Plina makes a mistake or whatever or someone gets away from him. And then you probably bring in Tom Kenny 
around the 65 70th minute that's that's just my take that's just my take everton are going to try and bully us but we have to match that same energy high intensity if you watch them against burnley they suffocated them mate suffocated them and that's exactly what we've been used to under marco silva at fulham this is the same sort of method and carry on the methods that we've already learned over the last couple of years bassi was out through illness at Newcastle yesterday. Hopefully we'll see him and Tosin back alongside each other. Willian was an unused sub against Newcastle. Maybe Marco Silva's thinking was to keep him fresh for this quarter final. And I'm so excited. I really can't wait. Not heading up to Goodison Park. Mate, I'm not even going to a game. I, I have been so poor with my season ticket, mate. I have been so, so poor. Missed Nottingham Forest. Missed West Ham. Not going to Burnley on Saturday because I'm travelling home for Christmas. Driving home for Christmas. But I'll be there for Arsenal 31st. I'm not even a real fan, am I? I'm an armchair. Prediction for Tuesday night. Um, penalties. 1-0. 1-0. But Fulham win on penalties. You heard it there first. Please remember if you're new here, mate. To do us a massive solid and subscribe to the channel just down below. Leave us a comment as well. How do you see Tuesday night's game going? And do you think that Fulham could go all the way? Laters.